Okay, in this video we're going to show you how we can um, actually do some curve fitting with the automatic curve fitting function in the Matrix 9 software. Um, we've previously showed you how to connect a crystal to the detector, to the array, and we've shown you how the um, by running the readout here and the um, sorry, by connecting to the module first we have to connect to it and make the USB and the matrix lights go green um, running readout we can see which pixel um, we have the crystal over so we can see in this case that we're on array 1 pixel 7 and now I'm going to halt the readout and I'm going to go into the plot energy um, settings graph and what I'm going to do now is by having channel 1, uh, array 1, and plot 7, uh, I'm going to show you what that um, plot looks like. So the energy plot is running after I selected the plot button. And this is, this is a, a nice looking peak that we've previously shown you how to get set up. But what we're going to do this time is show you how to actually do the curve fitting and get the energy resolution measurement from this. So I'm going to halt this graph because I'm very happy with how that looks. Um, I'm going to select the pixel selection box um, here, which is, which is right beside the plot, plot pixel 1 button. And I'm going to scroll through until I get to plot fit. And then I'm going to replot my graph. And the plot fit button uh, takes the energy calculation, which is shown here on the screen, um, and, and fits it from, fits a peak from a low of 0 uh, to a high of 1,000, um, and that's just the initial settings which are on the software. Uh, you know, clearly that is not the 511 kV peak. That's not the peak of interest. Um, but at least we've got the software running and everything is 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 going okay. So I'm going to halt the measurement. And what I want to do to to actually let the software achieve a good peak fit is I want to select a value that represents the um, separation between the Compton Continuum and the 511 kV peak. Uh, in this case, that point down there looks to be about 225. Uh, and that's about uh, 225 on the energy bin. Um, this is an uncalibrated energy bin, so don't be too worried about what the actual value is for the, for the setup here. It's, uh, you can calibrate that, that separately if you like. And I'm going to put the high value here at about 320. So you can see I'm going to change these settings so that I can bound my 511 kV peak and get a good a good fit. Um, now to make this this work, I need to click on the save range button and I need to replot the whole graph. So now the energy plot is running. You can see our energy plot starting to come out out of the noise and you can see the curve fitting. You can see here how it's showing the, um, the, the, the bars um, for the edge of the curve fit are going down to the x-axis at 225 and at 320. You can see that happening. And what's really nice is you can see the peak bin number here. Currently it's saying 278 or 279 depending on what the, what's the highest one. And very nice you can see the energy resolution starting to come out of the plot. It's about, this one in this case is about 14.2 uh, about 14.2 percent, um, and you can you can achieve better values than that if you really try to optimize things. But that's a pretty good that's a pretty good value uh, to have achieved um, by having just directly placed the crystal uh, on top of your matrix SL9 readout head. Um, so with that, we would be very happy that we've got a very good um, um, very good signal being captured by the readout head. Um, we'd be very happy with the coupling. We'd be very happy with the spectra that we see, um, seeing the 511 peak, being able to get a good 14% um, energy resolution, and also being able to qu quite easily identify the 14, uh, the 1.4, sorry, 1.2 MeV peak um, here on the right-hand side.